If you like tech and fun as well, then hello world, it's show and tell with Chloe. E. What did you bring to show and tell today? So today, I'm going to bring what are known as logic apps. Ooh. And I, I, I kind of made a decision. <clears throat> so we're all on Twitter, you and me and everyone else. We're tweeting. We're, mm -hmm. Sometimes we want to look on Twitter and get information. Yeah. And so let's think about the idea of uh, I want to find out more about your, your, your web show. And I want to be able to store portions about your web show maybe into another service. Or maybe I want to get a text message every single time someone hashtag tweets about your, 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 your show or anything. So in the past, I know this is, this is kind of difficult and you're going to have to sit and write some code for it. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually made a delayed social media posting app when I was at Hackbrite, and I spent several, several weeks making this. So you're saying that this project that took me forever to build and uh, has a bunch of bunch of code, I can actually write with no code at all? This sounds like witchcraft. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I come from a place where I listen to a lot of witchy music, but I can swear to you, no witchcraft here. I'm not going to do anything uh, you, you, you can't do yourself. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah. you already showed us how much code you needed to write. So let's get past that complexity and let's think about really, really simple ways to build important applications for us. So the first thing we're going to do is create a resource group. The resource group is going to be where everything that we create today is going to live. So it can be this application, but it can be other resources that we need. And so what we'll call it is show and tell stuff. Would you suggest that when you're building an app, you usually want to have that location to be where most of your users are versus yourself? Or how do you usually think through that? Well, here's the way to think about it is data sovereignty is really important and data governance. So if you have data associated with your application um, and you're in a region where the local government or the EU says any data related to this application that you create needs to stay in this region is one of the reasons why we do these. So when we get started, I'm not going to build anything in Europe because my application isn't that important to us. This is a demo app. So I'm just going to build East US because that's the closest to me and the users that are going to use it. So that'll be a lower latency. But all the data associated with what we're building, the metadata is going to be stored in East US. So we can still pick where we want the application to live. But this is where all the info about the app that's stored in Azure is going to be kept in an East US data center. And it's going to get replicated uh, and making sure within the data center region, it's always going to stay there. So we can just go ahead and review and create. We're done. Uh, now we have our resource group. Mm -hmm. So one of the cool things that we're going to do now that we've got our resource group is we're actually going to start building uh, this application, this logic app. And to start doing that, we just click Add. And now this is going to give us all these different resources that are available in Azure. It feels like there's a million of them. The marketplace is huge. It's like the marketplace from Aladdin. <laughs> yes. So, so let's let's go in here and uh, let's type Logic App. And what it's going to do is going to give me the ability to start creating a Logic App. Uh, this seems too easy, Jay. I'm, this is witchcraft. Truthfully. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> this is some wizardry. This is some Harry I Potter stuff. Uh, uh, and so now, as you can see, uh, logic apps allow developers to design workflows, triggers, um, steps. So we can think of it like step one, do this thing. Step two, do another thing. So to start the process, I don't need to clone a repository. Um, I don't need to open up VS code. I need to do this. I click create. And, and so what it's going to do is go to like most other things in, in Azure. So we've got our project builder uh, that's going to go to Azure Resource Manager and eventually send everything there. So let's give it a name. Um, let's call it BCC Bot. Okay? Sweet. So we're just going to do a region. We're not going to do it as an integration service environment. If you want to know what that is, you got Bing. And then what we've got here are like some common triggers. So when a new tweet is posted, like that in itself is really, really freaking cool. 
that you having can just worked with the Twitter API, that is a tricky thing to put together on the back end. So this is even great yeah. for people who are in a pinch and just need to get something up and running quickly. So there's no use spending time with boilerplate. You know what I mean? Yeah. That actually allows you to do communication and then connect the, the, the a tweet connected from the API into a database. We've already got those workflows right here. Um, and I wanna show you some pre-created ones that I think are really cool. And uh, one of them that you and I, like we played around with the other day and I really liked it. So post to a Slack if a new tweet comes in. Yes. And so this is really ideal. Let's say that you and I are running the BCC contest. And we wanna make sure that all the tweets that are for the BCC contest or something like that, um, they get put into Slack so that you know, oh crap, there's a new uh, thing going on. So I'm going to show everybody how to do it live with Slack, um, but let's, let's get to the point. So let's use this template. It's really already created. We don't have to do anything. And it's very visual too. As a visual learner, I'm really liking this. This is why it worked for me. I'm a really good like learn by doing and every single piece is a doing. So first thing the Logic app wants to do is connect to Twitter. So what is it going to do? It's going to bring up uh, the off page for Twitter. Uh, I'm just going to provide my username and password. We've got our Microsoft Logic app. It's now authorized to start working with it. It's using my Twitter account. Uh, and you can see now there, Twitter, J. And so now what I can do is set up our next connection is to Slack. So now we've actually done all the authentication and boilerplate that you would typically have to write to be able to connect those APIs to this application is done. Click continue. Now we have all the logic ready for us. And I want to show you. So this is what it looks like in this view. WYSIWYG in it, if you will. Let me make it a little bigger. It's just the logic of the logic app. Yes. So here's the cool thing. If we go in a code view, we're gonna actually see what actually builds these. And you know what this is? This is just JSON. Yeah, this is very similar to when I play with um, micro bit stuff that I can just do drag and drop or I can go look at the code. Whoa. Yes. So all we're doing here is uh, we're building in this Logic Apps Designer or we can write the code and review the code on the JSON side. The plus side about not doing it in the JSON side is that we don't have to worry about linting. We don't have to worry about an errant space somewhere, or a missing uh, character return or something like that. So what are we, what, what's your, your, your uh, show's uh, hashtag for BCC? Hashtag BCC all. So we can set the interval so we can actually have it uh, once a minute. But if we wanted to, we can get pretty wild and we could do seconds. Um, the thing that you need to remember, though, is you're still limited by your API. So if Twitter's API says you can only hit me so many times uh, in a session, then obviously you're not going to want to set it to once a second, every second. Like, that doesn't make a sense. So when a new tweet with BCC all appears, that hashtag, it's going to do a thing. And it's going to do it to Slack. So uh, message text will be the text of the tweet and who tweeted it. And I have to find a channel to put it in. So here are all these different channels in my Slack. Sweet. And I'm drafting a tweet. So these parameters right here, this message text that we see, uh, what's really cool is we can use all these dynamic variables to add more stuff into uh, what eventually is going to go into Slack. So if we want to know like the ID of the tweet because we eventually want to embed it in something or we want Ooh. who did it or all, we have all these things like all these different uh, variables that we don't we can add into our application and we don't necessarily need to write code. This is going to take care of a lot of the just like simple things that I want to build with the with the Twitter API just by dragging sure. and dropping. So we've got J Chloe channel is going to get these tweets and that text and it's gonna come from a user called JBot. So let's save it. Now, the app is saved, and what it's actually gonna give us a chance to do here, which makes it really, is it lets you test it. So all you have to do is click Run, and now create the tweet, Chloe. Let's see if this works. And Hashtag just make sure that be all. Okay, I'm pressing Tweet. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, it's tweeted. It happened. 
Now let's watch the trigger. So the trigger is gonna wait. This is the part where we fast forward and we're like chipmunks and it's like. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's gonna take a minute to do the search. And there's post message. So let's go ahead and check Slack. My goodness, the moment of truth. Oh, there yes? it is. We did it. Oh my gosh, that was so easy. And you didn't even have to like put anything on GitHub. You just like did the thing. This can be used by someone in marketing. This can be used by someone who maybe doesn't want to bother an engineer, but wants to set up the logic behind, you know, getting these notifications to their team. They don't need to know really any code. All you really need to know is kind of the basics of the resource group, but We'll link to the, the Microsoft Learn um, module below so people can, can do a, a walkthrough if they want to get familiarized with all of that stuff. But I'm just kind sure. of, it's, this is wild to me. All the time you'll save, everyone. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Thank you so much for bringing this to show and tell today. I'm just so excited for the people out there who have been scraping the internet everywhere to just figure out how to build this very simply and easily. And I think the best part of this is literally you you didn't look at or touch any code at all. We looked at the JSON, but we didn't no, edit it at all. It's so simple. <laughs> yeah, I think every day people like us who have either written code or um, have built things, you know, infrastructure, should find ways to help people take their first step. Those fundamental Absolutely. things. And even if it's showing someone how to connect to services and then look at the JSON, I think that that's just a way to take those first steps. And I think, you know, Chloe, it's 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 really cool to be able to do this for people because um, you help them save time and actually do important stuff. Yeah, it's going to not only empower a bunch of people who are maybe not, con they don't consider themselves technical or engineers, but also it can save engineers a bunch of time so they can actually work on the important stuff that they don't need to build from scratch necessarily that we've built for them here. Oh my gosh, it blows my mind. Now I want to go back in a time machine when I was like going to Hackbrite and crying my eyes out trying to figure out recursion and cron expressions and putting together authentication through Twitter and be like, hey girl, there's power apps in the future. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. The great thing that I love about logic apps is logic apps take a simple idea of how do I do A and B yeah. and bring it down to a really uh, easy level for just about anybody who can just point, click, and move. Well, I love drag, and I love drag and drop, so this is a, a blending of all my favorite things. Thank you so much for sharing on Show & Tell Thank today. You. And we will link to the docs and also some really awesome Microsoft Learn modules below. So thanks for tuning in, y'all. Show & Tell with Chloe. E.